here we are here on another episode of here to the streets man i have here uh somebody who's not only a good friend of mine um but uh somebody who I actually like i grew i grew to to really like as an artist uh g baby how you doing oh, good. my brother what's going on man what's yeah, going on with you man i, I just gotta say i i appreciate you coming through man you know it bro it's the one stop shop oh god my dog, my for dog. Real, you come through here, you really see this the one stop shop. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> for real, for real. So yeah, let's uh let's get into it, man. Let's do it. Um, bro. first of all, I want to say congratulations on the uh on the new tape, oh, Ghetto Appreciate Baby. It, yeah. Uh, how you feeling about it, bro? For real, like, I really had to get this one off first, like, because I got so much different shit. You know what I'm saying? So I was feeling like just being in the city and like. My name bubbling, but not completely out there like that. I had to get a city, some city shit first. You know what I'm saying? Right. So just me dropping Ghetto Baby first to kick the year off was just kind of like a stamp to just show the city that I could do this shit. Right. Now, how I'm about to come next, they're going to just be like, oh, yeah, this, this nigga really everywhere with the shit. You can really do it all. You know what I'm saying? So I can't Ghetto Baby, hit him with some street records and just show them I could do it. You know what I'm saying? I linked up with a couple people on that bitch, Jay Swan. Nisha, who I got on there, Rock, uh, Young Rock. Uh, I got Kato with that act like that. I linked up with a couple niggas in the city. Yeah, man. We made some shit, bro. I'm, I'm, lo I'm loving the project, too. man. Very dope project. Yeah. Very dope project. So uh, let's actually let's get into your story. Um, where you from? I from sit. Well, I, I was born in like Warren, like eight mile, like Van Dyke area, and then we left up out of there when I was like four, and then we moved to uh, like nine mile John R. Hazel Park area. So I was always in that little area, and then I fuck around with the school out more in my area to play hockey. I switched it up on them. It was either go to Cass Tech and, and just go to school, or go to hot, or go to Warren Mott and the Birds and play hockey. I was always the hockey player. Nobody else played hockey. So I'm playing Hazel Park and they ain't had no hockey team in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Niggas right. looked at me like hockey. What are you talking about? I really thought I was about to go all the way with the shit. So hockey was my plan in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So. I really went wherever that was taking me. Right. And that took me to school out in my, you know what I'm saying? I did my thing there. I became the captain of the hockey team out there and just did my thing. And then. I so, uh, growing up in that area, like, what was that like growing up in that area? Like, was it, was it any different from Detroit or like, did it, did, did it actually have a lot of similarities with like, Detroit? Yeah. It's kind of like, it's all. Uh, Really, it's kind of just like you could you could be of all the bullshit anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like that's you can't ever let your guard down anywhere you at. You know what I'm saying? You could get popped, you get popped on 13 mile. You know what I'm saying? So like, like it's kind of like that. But like niggas, like it's just cool. It's it's more laid back out there. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of just like I don't really know how to explain that. Niggas act tough everywhere though. You know what I'm saying? You got tough. You got niggas act tough everywhere. Right, no matter right. what. And plus, there's niggas from the hood that went to my, you know what I'm saying, that go to school out in the burbs, you know what I'm saying, so. Yeah. Niggas got big heads everywhere you at, you know what I'm saying, so. You know how egos is, you know what I'm saying. Right, um, so you mentioned, you mentioned, uh, that one of your hobbies growing up was, uh, was playing hockey. Is that something that you pretty much did, like, when we, we talking, like, before high school, uh, years or something, uh, Man. we're talking before high school, is that, like, something that you pretty much did with your time, like, play hockey? Or? I ain't gonna lie. Hockey was like the first thing I was doing since I was like three years old. I was skating. I was skating at two. I was in the league at three. Ten bits league. Niggas don't even know about it. Some, some, some small hockey shit. Skating at three years old, you know what I'm saying? So I, it was just really, that was it. You know what I'm saying? So like, and then I fuck around. My first time in the studio, we gonna get to that. You probably got a question for it. Like when my first time, how I get involved with it. My first time in the studio was actually, I was in a uh, rehab program when I was younger because I got into a bad car accident at the age of four. I had lost my memory and shit like that. So when we was in a rehab program, we used to go to different events and shit like that. We do the Michigan Raceway. We go uh, we go to Cedar Point. We just do all bunch of special shit. One day we went to the studio. They picked like six of us out. We went to the studio and made a song for the camp. And it was that day I walked in that bitch. I made the song. I still remember my little verse. I left that bitch, I was just, I got my little, my little mixtape player. I did the 50 Cent Beats, all his instrumentals. 
Like anything, not, not like a 50 cent type beat, but I'll do a 50 cent song, but just like take a song out that bitch and just this beat and I'll rap all his lyrics out there. And just constantly be rapping 50 cent. It would be his shit, but I'll just be rapping his shit. I kind of just got infatuated with the thought of making music and just being like a rapper type then, but I knew I didn't have what it takes to like write, write songs and be creative when it comes right. to poetry and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? So I was already good at hockey still then. So I was like, I love music. That's when I kind of grew to love for music at a young age, but still it was always hockey. Right. And then that's when I, I got into high school and then shit, you know, the, the hoes started coming. The new whip come, my niggas come, and then, and right. I can't do the grades, you know what I'm saying, because I'm right. focused on this. So then kind of hockey went like that, because I didn't get accepted in the school I went to, and then we started rapping in high school. Right, so, so. Um, let's talk about, like, let's talk about, like, your your, your upbringing. Who raised you? Shit, my mom and pops. And mom and I come pops. from a stable household. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk about so, that. Let's talk about, like, how... Um, you know, most people with like maybe even like your street background or um, people most most people with hip hop most uh, hip hop artists they can't really talk about like how they came from a stabilized home uh, upbringing with both of their parents. So um, yeah, let's talk let's talk about like how was your upbringing? I feel like, like see my upbringing. Parents. I always had that's one thing I'm super blessed with. I've always had the most support growing up with anything I needed to do. It's like we we never were the richest. We never had it. You know what I'm saying? We it's not but I never didn't have it. It's like if I wanted a brand new video game, Pops working two jobs. Like he gon he gonna get you know what I'm saying, he gonna go out his way and try to make that happen for me. So like just coming up, being raised with the type of parents I was raised with, kinda just opened my eyes to a lot of shit, you know what I'm saying? Just helped me with a lot of shit. And then on top of that, just to, just to double back on, like, the support system I've always had, like, with the music, like, I've always been passionate with the hockey, but, like, right when I put the hockey down and picked up with the music, niggas used to laugh, like, nobody believed in that shit, you know what I'm saying? I love my brothers to death. At first, my brothers were like, nigga, what? Rapper, nigga? Tripping, you know what I'm saying? But one thing my peoples never did was, they was like, oh, you want to rap? I think that's a good idea. And then, shit, I was working, this exactly how it came about when I met BJ. For my parents' support, I was only I was working at a gas station, hustling, selling weed, wasn't making really shit. And then uh, I don't know where I seen BJ post that one on one sit down shit, and it was like what was like a hundred dollars sit down. I didn't have twenty dollars, thirty dollars. That's possible. You know, let me buy seven. Without a question, what you need a boat? Yeah, hell yeah. DJ BJ nigga on the radio, hell yeah. Whoop, here you go. Go do that shit. That day. Sat down with them, you know what I'm saying? So it was, and that's just based, that stems off the support I have for my people. It's just, you know what I'm saying? That motivates me too, you know what I'm saying? Just them believing me the way they do motivates me to want to do better for them, you know what I'm saying? So right. it's kind of like a lot of niggas only got they self, so they don't go too hard because they only got to, they only got to go hard for they self, you know what I'm saying? Like, I go hard for my people too because that's what I was raised by. They went hard for me growing up. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I look at it, really, with the shit. Right. Um, so let's talk about your like your heritage. Um, what what uh what nationality are your parents? Like what what See, what's your pops is African American. My mom's French Canadian. Okay. Like, so just French Canadian and African American. A lot of people think I'm from Canada and shit. I gotta clear that up. Yeah, you got a you got a huge following out in Canada too, man. Uh, shout out Windsor, man. Shout out what the Canada. What's crazy is I'm not from Canada at all, I'm from here. But like, it all popped off. My major buzz popped off in Canada first. Like, me and my mans, we started going over there when we was 19. <coughs> right when we were like, able to drink. And then like, literally it happened the first night, it's like a fucking movie. Literally like a movie. We go over there, we meet two hoes. These two hoes knew these other three niggas that had a lot of shit on, like knew everybody on Snapchat. And I had the whip, I had the charger with the Lambo doors the Lambo and shit. Doors. They ain't never seen that shit over there. So that shit was different. Doggy put it on the Snapchat and everybody's like, who is that? Woo woo, we wanna see the car. And they had a little spot over there called Suicide Hill. That's where everything kicked off from. We I put up at Suicide Hill, everybody was there. All the Canadians there. Everybody just turned up. It was like love right when, right when I met everybody. All love, right off the jump. 
And then after that, bro, we was coming back every weekend, turning the parties up, rapping at the parties. Everybody wanted to freestyle all that shit. So then that's when my first single came about, Cancer Datas. They was rapping that shit all in, all in the house parties, all that. They playing in the clubs. I started getting booked in the little clubs over there. And it was just like, damn, just took off quick, though. Because it's all love. Like, for real, for real, it was just all love right from the back. Because they ain't, it's kind of weird. Cause it's like, I'm an outsider. Like, they show outsiders so much love over there. You know what I'm saying? But that's what it was, bro. And I just took advantage of it and ran with it, for real. That was like my most solid fan base. So I just stuck to it. Stayed going over there. Stayed fucking with them. Right, right. 